Nasr Siddiqui felt very privileged to have been born into a prosperous and influential Muslim family. As he grew, Nasser quickly decided that financial wealth was the key element to a successful and happy life. By the time he turned 35, Nasser had attained the wealth he so desired. Then, at the peak of his financial success, Nasser was stricken with a very painful disease called shingles. Two doctors came in. Maybe they thought that I couldn't hear them or didn't understand them. They started talking back and forth. And one of the things they said was that his immune system is not fighting back, his body's not fighting back, he's gonna die. That came as a shock because these were the people that I had my hope in and my faith in and my trust in, but at that point my hope had gone and I was crushed and, and it, I didn't, I, my money didn't mean anything, you know, my strength, my determination, my willpower didn't mean anything. And the only thing left was humility and fear. I didn't know, Karen, what death held for a Muslim, but, but I was afraid of it. I believed in a God. I didn't believe in Jesus as the Son of God, but even um, the Muslim God, Allah, is not a healer. So I didn't really say, Allah, heal me. I cried out in desperation. I just said, God, if you're real, don't let me die. That night, the God of the Christians answered my cry. It was not Muhammad, it was not Allah, it was Jesus. And, and something happened that night. The very next morning, the doctors determined the blisters had stopped growing. They released him from the hospital with a suitcase full of medications and the grim diagnosis of continued pain and blisters. But Nasser knew that he had experienced something divine. He needed to know this Jesus. So a few days later in his own home, Nasser got down on his knees and cried out one more time. I accepted Jesus into my heart and, and I got so excited. I didn't. I didn't know what born again means. I didn't know any of the Christianese language. All I knew was that this Jesus that had healed me was now in my heart. Just a few days later, every one of the blisters and all of the disfigured flesh fell away from Nasser's body. The physical evidence of his miracle increased his desire to know God. So he bought a Bible and began to consume the word. Nasser shared the news of his physical and spiritual transformation with his coworker and closest friend. Anita was a Christian woman who had been a constant support to Nasser throughout his illness, and she was eager to supply him with materials from Kenneth Hagen and Kenneth Copeland Ministries. As Nasser's knowledge of the Word and his love for the Lord developed, so did his relationship with Anita. Though a previous divorce gave him reason to be cautious, Nasser soon became convinced that God had chosen Anita to be his wife. We had a dream wedding. We went on a two-month honeymoon. It was beautiful. And within a year, we had lost everything we owned. And shortly, I'd say, right at the point when we lost everything we owned is when I found out that I was pregnant, which was a great shock to me. It was not what I had planned. When Anita was four and a half months pregnant, her hands twisted up like this, and her feet twisted up. And at first, the doctors didn't understand whether it was a stroke or whether it was a brain tumor. She finally became paralyzed from the neck down on the right side of her body and blind. So one minute we were very, very successful and the next minute we lost everything and uh, we started all over again. But we continued to keep God first. Nine months comes along and it's time for me to give birth to this baby. And we still don't know what my problem is. They still don't know what is wrong with my body. Once I had the baby and once I had such a, a difficult birth, everything started going downhill. It was like, you know, all of my dreams now all of a sudden came to the reality of a nightmare. I had all these aspirations of having a baby and how wonderful it would be, and here I was in a bed. I couldn't get out. I couldn't take care of my baby. And uh, there was no joy. They diagnosed multiple sclerosis, said that she would be a cripple all of her life. We had to hang on to the Word of God that Anita would come out of this. When the situation looked impossible, I would always remember how much more impossible was a Muslim about to go to hell. And Jesus came. And if Jesus would come for a dying Muslim, 
Now I'm serving the Lord. My wife is serving the Lord. He's blessed us with a child. Would he not be faithful? I believe that God healed, and I watched God heal my husband. But man, when you can't get out of your bed, when you can't see your baby, when you can't um, stand on your own two feet, all of a sudden the rubber met the road. And I went to God and I said, okay, God, I have MS. And now I need healing from MS. Nasser used their limited funds to purchase a continuous play tape recorder and every healing tape by Kenneth Hagen. Anita listened day and night, and as she remained constant in her faith, the attacks on her body began to diminish, and within two and a half years, every trace of multiple sclerosis had disappeared from her body. Anita was finally free to be a wife and a mother, to live in the reality of her dream. When I look at my life, when I look at my family's life without crying, it's an absolute miracle. You know, when you think about what God has done for us, the fact that I'm even alive is a major blessing, and Anita is healed. Nasser and Anita's family is complete with three wonderful boys, Matthew, his younger brother Josiah, and Nasser's oldest son Aaron. Upon graduating from Rhema Bible Training Center in 1997, Nasser and Anita founded Wisdom Ministries based in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Nasser maintains a full schedule conducting seminars on the biblical principles of economics and excellence. And recently, the Lord has blessed Wisdom Ministries with a new building for its headquarters. When we were successful in business, we had the cars, we had the homes, we had the building, we had the business. We lost it all, trusted in God, never doubted that God would not restore. And now he's given us the home, he's given us the cars, he's given us the building, and I love what I do, just teaching the word and serving him. It's more, he's more than faithful. I mean, God is good, and if we won't let go of him, he won't let go of us. He's faithful.